Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm Paul Moore and it is time for Ask Me Anything Real Estate. And it looks like we're getting booted up here, so let's get started. I hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm see Paul that Moore got my audio and it is on time here in the background. For That's ask crazy. Me anything what am I real doing? Estate. Um, and it looks like we're getting anyway. It's Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern, and hopefully you are joining me live. I am um, here on Bigger Pockets, and it is a Saturday afternoon in Virginia. And so I need to hear from you and tell me if you can hear me, tell me if you can see me. Uh, it's best if you jump in on Bigger Pockets because I don't know if YouTube and Facebook are working today. And so um, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, looks like you can, but I'm not 100% sure. So today I'm gonna to talk briefly about finding anomalies, the Warren Buffett path to success in investing. So Warren Buffett spent, you know, he's pretty famous for this. He, he didn't have a tremendous social life. He didn't have a super successful marriage. He um, didn't do a lot of things right, but he did one thing right, and that is, okay, I can see, hey, I can see I'm here live on YouTube. Hey, everybody. So tell me where you're from. Hey, Demis in New York City. Hey, Jim. Hey, Mikey. Hey, I wanna thank my good friend Gabe from Lynchburg. Gabe is a wonderful banker at bb and and he is helping me out, uh, try to figure out how to, uh, how to make sure I'm live here on YouTube and Facebook. So, YouTube, Gabe, I've got it on YouTube, got it pulled up, thanks to you, my friend. Hey, Camacho in New Jersey, hey, Savage in Utah, hey, Dory in Tampa. Uh, Gabe, if you can find it in um, Facebook, that would be awesome. If you can't, I get it. So anyway, uh, I want to talk about how Warren Buffett succeeded wildly in real estate. I put a new article out on Bigger Pockets, and I might be able to find it here. You can find it. It came out this week. It was talking about, I called it something different than Bigger Pockets called it. Um, I called it something like your one simple step to world domination, world real estate domination. I, don't, I guess they didn't like that. Uh, they, they, they called it something else, and I don't even see it here right now, but uh, it is. it came out on June 21st, um, and it's something like crushing it, how to dominate your niche in real estate or something like that. And so what I'm going to do is spend five minutes talking about that article, and then we're going to go to your questions live. And Gabe is still looking for to see if I'm live on Facebook as well. If, if you're on Facebook and you're watching this, thank you. I can't see your questions. You might want to jump over on the YouTube channel where I can see Dude Real Estate, one of my favorite friends here, Brian in Mobile. Hey, Rose in Montclair, New Jersey. Hey, if you can give me a thumbs up, a like, a share, it'll help me make sure I don't get fired by bigger pockets. Um, I, you may think I'm a millennial from you know my look, but um, in the shirt. But uh, my wife brought me this Columbia shirt last night for our anniversary. Thank you, dear. But uh, I'm not a millennial, and I'm probably not figuring out how to go on Facebook here. It's probably my fault. But anyway, so Warren Buffett spent years, years and years and years, 80% eight, eight of his time, which was an 18-hour day. So what's that? 80% of 18, it's a lot of hours, like 15 hours a day studying, uh, K, studying 10Ks from companies, studying the Wall Street Journal, studying the news. He read the Wall Street Journal religiously. He spent up to $500, was it a week, I think, uh, getting the Wall Street Journal delivered to him when he was in some remote location once. $500 a day or $500 a week to make sure he got the Wall Street Journal. He had a special deal with the Wall Street Journal to get it the night before it came out. So Warren Buffett spent his time, and what he was doing as he spent his many, many long days and hours was looking for anomalies. And what does that mean? He was looking for inconsistencies between price and earnings. 
between the share price or the cash value of a company and the cash they had on hand. He was looking for something that didn't look right. And when he found something that didn't look right, he was able to cash in on that. And uh, when he cashed in on it, he cashed in big. Now, people that invested with Warren Buffett in the 1950s, they didn't all become billionaires because some of them invested like literally $1,000. But people who invested in the 50s, 60s, 70s uh, generally became extremely wealthy. We all know this. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway has been incredibly successful. But the question is, how does that... Uh, apply to you in your real estate world. How can you look for anomalies? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw open the floor on YouTube. And again, I haven't figured out how to get on Facebook Live today. Sorry. But um, on YouTube, what uh, what does that mean to you? If you're a real estate investor, how can you look for anomalies? How can you look for things that are not right? What What can you do to try to find deals that are out of line. So I'm going to give you a quick example. Um, and uh, uh, the, uh, excuse me, thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Um, so a quick example is a uh, friend of mine named Matt has a self-storage business in Las Vegas. Uh, my company, Wellings Capital, invests with his self-storage business. And what he does is he looks for mom and pop operators in the path of growth that have something missing from their business. It may be a profitable self-storage uh, facility, but they may not be maximizing their income. For example, they may be in a place where there's not many U-Haul trucks for rent, and they realize that by adding U-Haul, they can add a significant amount of income to their business and therefore profit and therefore value. Um, so he looks for anomalies like that. He's got a team of four full-time people working the phones, uh, calling 150 to 200 self-storage and mobile home parks a day. And so pretty amazing that he is, he's got a team like this. And so he, they call and they're talking to these owners, these mom and pop owners, and they're looking for opportunities. You know, do, how, do you, how do you do your books? Do you sell locks, boxes, tape, and scissors? Uh, do you have U-Haul? How do you charge clients? And some of these owners will give them all the right answers or some of the right answers. And they're saying, hey, you know, I bought this, I, I built this facility for $2 million back in the 80s. I'd be willing to sell it for, let's say, $5 million now. And he can see what's called latent potential. Now, latent potential is the same as looking for anomalies. He's looking for things that aren't right, things that aren't complete, things that could be done so much better by running it professionally. The owner might know about these things. They may have gone to a conference or bought a cassette tape. That's a joke. Um, or they might have figured out some way to run their business better, but they don't have the energy. They're making five or $10,000 or more a month. They're enjoying life. And they view it basically as a passive investment. But self-storage, a, a self-storage facility is a passive investment for people who want to make decent income. But it's an active, very uh, busy, very hard to manage investment and a very complicated investment for those who want to make a killing at this, who want to make a lot of money. So the operators we invest with are those who find these mom and pop opportunities they upgrade them to a professionally run facility and uh, then they uh, manage them well and they make a very, uh, they make outsized returns. And so looking for anomalies, the Warren Buffett way is the way that I'm, uh, I'm personally wanting to learn to invest and I'm personally investing that way and I'm personally investing Wellings Income uh, excuse me, Wellings Income Fund and Wellings Growth Fund are investing in opportunities like that. And so I am going to, uh, after that brief uh, clunky introduction, I am going to take your questions. So if you are on YouTube and you've got some questions, uh, let's do it. So um, Muhammad Awad says, I have $600,000 ready to invest. 
So Muhammad, uh, there's lots of good things you can do. Why don't you, Muhammad, why don't you, if you want to share with the group, tell us, you know, what you're interested in doing. Are you interested in flipping? Are you interested in buying a large multifamily, a small multifamily? Are you interested in investing passively? Um, I know I've went over this on a lot of other shows, but there are seven paths to success in real estate investing, as far as I know. And so if you all want me to go over those seven paths, I can do that real briefly. Muhammad, if you want to reach out to me offline, maybe we won't get to cover it here, but we can talk about what uh, would be, you know, what some different ways you could invest your $600,000. So, hey, Arlene, good afternoon, St Savage. Steven Savage, go buy a house right now with that. Never save money. Okay. Um, I agree that, you know, putting money in a bank account. I talked to a guy this morning in Alabama, a wonderful guy. And uh, he's in his 40s. He's been very conservative all his life. And he had $100,000 in a bank account. And he said he realized he could be making a lot more money in CDs. And then he looked at real estate and realized that there are some fairly safe ways to invest $100,000 and make a lot more money. And so um, uh, that's what he is doing. And so I uh, agree that it would probably, real estate is a great place to invest and uh, highly recommend Muhammad that you find some great real estate opportunities to invest in. So I've got several people saying go over the seven paths. Okay, so this is a book I'm working on uh, called Seven Paths to Real Estate Mastery. I might do one for self storage and another one for multifamily. But um, uh, if you want to Take some notes, this would be a good time to do it. Path number one is called stacking. Brandon Turner tells us that stacking is a way of starting small. You might buy a single family home, fix it up, rent it out, sell it for a profit, get a duplex, do it again, get a fourplex, do it again, get an eight. I know a guy in Arlington, Texas that started with a thousand dollars mechanics bonus from his job. He uh, made $27,000 on his first duplex. He uh, went up from there over 22 years when I met him in 19, uh, excuse me, 2016. He uh, had started in 1994, I think. Uh, he was up to selling an $11 million, um, $11 million, uh, 132 unit um, apartment complex. So pretty amazing uh, how stacking can work. It's a long, hard road, but it will work. A second way is being a deal finder. You can be a multifamily, self-storage, mobile home park deal finder. Uh, I've got a friend in New York City right now who's running into mobile home parks that he um, doesn't want to acquire, but he wants to make them available. So he's going to be getting a piece of the deal by pawning those off to other people. You can be a deal finder in multifamily. You can be a deal finder in self-storage. You can do it with single family homes. That it's kind of similar to wholesaling. And so um, it's, uh, but something you can do. And the goal with that is to learn the business, not just to get in and make a commission like a realtor, but to say, hey, I want to stay in. Will you give me 10% of your general partnership for bringing this deal to the table? I want to stay in and stay involved. The third way is capital raising. Now this is very um, you have to be very careful. The Securities and Exchange Commission doesn't like people raising capital for other people's deals if you're not licensed. So you're going to want to go strike up a relationship with somebody, a syndicator, sponsor, or operator who wants you to raise money for them and they will give you a piece of their general partnership. You might want to start a new general partnership and you be the money raiser and the other person doing the, uh, a lot of the operations. Uh, that's a third path. A fourth path is to strike it rich and go big. So uh, I see somebody else on here. KIT uh, says, um, I have a million dollars to reinvest from the Caribbean. That's awesome. So if you have a million dollars, you can just go in and you can find a good asset manager. You can find a good property manager and you can just go in big. Uh, if you have an inheritance, if you've hit the lottery, if you sold your Bitcoin at $19,000 a coin and December 19th of 2017 before it plummeted. Sorry guys. Um, 
you can you might have the money just to go big you can do that that's that's the fourth path the fifth path is called get a job now you may not want to get a job maybe that's why you're on here um, you want to avoid getting a job but um, getting a job would mean getting a job as a property manager getting a job as a an asset manager getting a job as a commercial broker getting a jo job as a commercial lender so you would get a job in one of those areas and then you would learn all you can meet all the people you can learn to run the numbers get familiar with the industry and then you from there you could springboard into uh, getting your own real estate investing career off the ground um, path six is the path I Path six and seven I recommend for most people. Path six is being a passive investor. Now you may not like that, don't give me a thumbs down, don't boo me off, but um, uh, passive investing, if you're busy, if you're an IT professional, a doctor, uh, a lawyer, if you're making a lot of money at your job, you probably won't succeed in most cases if you are trying to go flip houses on weekends and evenings it's a lot of work it's painful and it's really really hard to make it work and so i invest i recommend a lot of people like this go passive do you know that you can take a hundred thousand dollars passive investment over 20 or 30 years and turn it into millions i've got the math to prove it it's not difficult math it doesn't have you don't have to invest with Berkshire Hathaway with Warren Buffett in the 60s to make this work it's possible to do it now I'm investing with operators right now who are making 20% a year 42% a year and 64% I know it sounds crazy per year on the money that investors invest with them and it's possible to do that uh, Mohammed I see that you're back on here yeah uh, passive is to me one of the best ways to go because in real estate passive income gets all the tax benefits of ownership of real estate you get a k1 you often get a loss on your tax return but you get money in your mailbox or bank account so passive investing is not as simple as it sounds there's a guy named jeremy roll in la who's set a model for doing this he has like 25,000 people in southern california following him through FIBI for investors by investors and the powerful thing Adam about passive income is that you get income and growth at the same time in answer to your question so um, I love passive investing in real estate and um, I would ask people who are trying to invest you know flip houses on the side while they're doing their day job unless you're full on getting ready to go into this full time if you're trying to live a life where you're working 40 or 50 hours in your day job and flipping houses at night I would say hey why are you working harder than you need to to make less than you could and I'm serious so um, hey Dominique yeah you can reach out to me if you want to ask me more about that uh, individually um, we, by the way a lot of these investments including the ones we're talking about are for accredited investors and if you don't know what that means I'll go over that after the seven pass somebody just has to ask me um, so um, the seventh path is find a coach or mentor now finding a coach or mentor can look like a lady I met the other day from San Francisco in 2009 I think she went to like 42 different organizations and says hey I'll work for you for free in your asset management department if you would just let me learn the business and so that's basically an apprentice relationship and she did and she, it launched her career and she's made a ton of money since then and she's going to be on my podcast I have a podcast called how to lose money and so a uh, pretty uh, exciting um, story that she has now a lot of other people have paid coaches Whitney Sewell is a friend of mine he Whitney's pretty famous and he's got a uh, podcast called the real estate syndication show and he hired a coach about a year and a half ago now he had hired gurus 10 or 15 years ago in Kentucky when he was younger and he it went nowhere and he lost a lot of money paying these weekend coaches who promise the moon but don't deliver but um, the um, but uh, Whitney hired a coach 
he paid thirteen thousand dollars plus i think 250 a month and he has had so much success since then and a lot of other people have hired a paid coach by the way that's what i've done twice in my life i have hired a twenty-five thousand dollar coach both just happened to be twenty-five thousand dollars and both times it led to some of the best success i've had in my life in these two different endeavors one was a long time ago and one was this same decade so coaches are roaches steven says man you're rough man okay so um anyway so paid coach mentoring those are possible um, ways to succeed in real estate and so um triangle triangle lee says which passive income that could bring 10 percent or more roi so self-storage again looking for anomalies as i fumbled through earlier in the show uh there are the the fry, the self-storage and mobile home market right now the owners are fragmented which means a lot of them are um, mom and pop owners and because they're mom and pop owners a lot of them uh, don't um, they don't know how to fully maximize the income from their facility and so you could uh, possibly um, try to find deals in those areas it's very very hard to find good deals in multifamily right now if you haven't noticed most of us have um, Camachos so where can we reach out to you? you can just private message me here on bigger pockets if anybody wants to talk if you want to uh, chat about anything I'm talking about follow through I also do a call on Wednesdays at noon Eastern if you're interested in joining I've got a handful of slots available for that again you can reach out to us at my bigger pockets private uh, message uh, there so Muhammad what are ways to find passive income other than real estate agents uh, Muhammad reach out to me would love to chat with you about that um, you can again the seven paths will give you an idea of how to do that uh, Adam says can I flip long distance absolutely lots of people do I think it's a lot harder but it's certainly possible Ed says solid locations for purchasing real estate as of right now um, there are um, there are some cities that still haven't caught up since the recession I heard of one some northern cities the other day that still have uh, houses in the 30 and 40,000 range that were selling for well over a hundred thousand before the recession so it's something you might want to uh, consider um, but always try to invest in an area that has a positive net population migration that means more people moving in than out um, places like Austin have two or three percent a year uh, population migration of course they also have intense competition to buy the real estate there so um, anyway uh, but look for that look for low unemployment look for a diverse economy look for jobs in government education and health care that's a nice mix usually you want a place that's not all dependent on one industry or one company um, you know take Detroit in the late 90s when it was imploding um, you, you know Detroit's recovered but you know it was a long painful process to get there I don't know if they'll ever be back to where they were Curtis says I'm looking to invest in the next few months we are looking to invest in duplexes what area of the country would be great to start in our cities in Ohio a good place to start you know Curtis I'm from Ohio and I've heard good things about Cleveland uh, Columbus for sure um, and I have a friend who's now investing in Dayton Ohio and Dayton had been on my absolute no-no list for years but it seems like uh, Dayton is coming back and my friend is investing and he's got really good things to say about it uh, Adam says I'm from New York would recommend South and Midwest oh yeah I agree someone says high yield savings short-term bond fixed income which is the best place to part money while you're accumulating for your first deal great question um, I would go with something where you can access the money quickly uh, I listened to Warren and Charlie Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's part of their uh, their big event in May and they have hundreds how much did they have part they have a lot of money part and you know I'm, I'm, I'm confused on the amount I but it's I think it's billions of dollars in cash 
they're waiting for a downturn and they have it quickly accessible. So find something that's quickly accessible. Um, Impact Real Estate, thanks for sharing. I live in Oregon, I'm from Texas, and I'm looking to invest here in Texas. Any advice investing in multiple markets? Yeah, my one piece of advice is really simple and it's probably obvious, and that is don't buy anything sight unseen. It's always worth going in person. So, hey, Kandarp, uh, starting with $25,000. Yeah, um, if you have $25,000, you might be able to loan that to a hard money lender. Uh, I know uh, two opportunities right now where you could invest with people that I know who are looking for twenty-five dollars or $50,000. You can reach out to me. Uh, Adam uh, says, get partners. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kyle, pros and cons of being a limited partner in syndication. The, the cons are you lose control. You're handing it completely over to somebody else. The pro is they're usually better than most of us. In other words, if you can find an expert in multifamily, single family, mobile home parks, healthcare, retail, if you can invest with an expert and they have a team and they survived or even thrived through the last, through the great recession, uh, the benefits far, far outweigh the downsides, especially if you look in their eyes, you see how they treat the, the waiter, you see how they treat their employees, you see how they talk about their wife, get some time with them. And I'm talking about passive investing right now. It's my favorite way to make a fortune in real estate. Um, hey, S. Likeo, how can I get your book? Yeah, I've got a book on multifamily investing. It's called The Perfect Investment, uh, and it is on Amazon. So you can look under Paul Moore, The Perfect Investment. I'm working on a book on self-storage as well. I'm hoping it'll be out by later this year. I'm hoping Bigger Pockets will publish it. Demis Shipley says, hi, Demis. Uh, hey, I live in New York City where real estate's very expensive. I'm currently saving money to invest in a duplex, but I have bad credit. How can I invest without having to wait so long? Well, Demis, if you're an accredited investor, your credit score doesn't matter. You can invest passively, again, as a limited partner in a syndication. If you're looking to invest actively, the best thing I recommend would be to find a partner with a better credit score, maybe partner up with them. I hope that helps. Uh, Carrie T says, I have beachfront selling the Barbados. We'll use a, oh, a million dollars. We already talked. How can I reinvest? I'm in the Caribbean. Um, Kai T, you can reach out to me. We can chat about that. Um, there are lots of uh, investments. Again, find an expert operator who's really, really good, thrived through the last recession, and consider maybe putting in 50000 with them, maybe 100000 testing the waters, and then investing more with them later. Um, Steven says, what state should I move to invest in? Uh, probably somewhere in the Southern Smile. Asante says, any commercial investors in Chicago land that mentor newbies? Um, I actually did a mentoring session in Chicago and I'm going to be doing another one probably in October. Um, so uh, you can reach out to me and talk about that. Um, let me think who else is in Chicago. You know, most mentors these days, you don't have to be local. You can find somebody, um, you know, the guy I mentioned, Whitney's mentoring with a guy in Cincinnati and Whitney's in Roanoke, Virginia. So. Um, I don't think you need to be local. And so, um, uh, let's see, who else did I miss? Um, Air Jordan, no, I don't think that'll stop you from investing in real estate. I don't see how it would have any effect at all. Um, okay, so, um, I need a small loan of a million dollars, Patrick says. Okay, I'm not sure how to help with that. Um, so when is your book coming out? Hi, Tony. Um, my new book on self-storage will be coming out probably this fall, either through me or through Bigger Pockets. I'm not sure. JK says, do you invest in Bitcoin? No, I don't. I do agree that it is speculation uh, because it doesn't have an inherent value. No offense to all you guys who love Bitcoin, and it's not, I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just saying 
that Bitcoin could be a dollar a, a coin or it could be a million a coin, depending on what people think. It doesn't throw off income. You know, in commercial real estate, the value of the real estate is the net operating income divided by the cap rate. Okay, so if you can drive up the income and if you can compress down the cap rate, the denominator in that equation, you can increase the value of your real estate. And so um, I, um, I really truly believe that, you know, Bitcoin, while it's fine to speculate in it, you just need to realize that you are speculating. Excuse me, I feel like I'm getting a little hay fever here. Uh, do you recommend a specific coach or training program? Uh, Osman, yes, I do. Um, I have quite a few that I recommend. It depends where, if you want to be in self-storage, mobile home parks, uh, single family, um, where you want to be. If you want to reach out to me, I can share that. Um, if, if enough people ask me on here for a paid coach, I will throw out a few that I know that I like, um, but they're not cheap. I'll tell you, they're not cheap in general. Um, so uh, what is a good ROI we can expect from real estate, says Kandarp. Um, you know, historically, a good ROI is, you know, 8 to 12% in total annual return. In this last 11 years since the recession, since the bottom of the recession in uh, the fall of 08, people have gotten used to much, much higher returns. And the truth is, it's not normal. It's not normal to get 20% annual return. But people have gotten to the place where they think it is normal. And so uh, it's, um, we, we are, we do have operators that we invest with who are getting in the, like I said, 20%, 42% annual return rate. But that's just not normal. And I don't know how long that can keep going. Um, Christopher Richardson. Hey, Christopher, I have no money to invest, just time. My advice to you would be to follow one of those seven paths that just take time. You know, maybe get an a, a apprentice, apprentice yourself out to somebody, uh, possibly uh, go out and be a deal finder. Uh, there are things you can do with no money. A lot of people are in that situation. Uh, Patrick, go rob a bank. I don't know anything about that. So, uh, Kim, hi Kim from Portland, Cash Pirata. I am on a, a high on a duplex right now. What? I own a duplex right now and I bought it about three years ago. The prices have risen quite a bit. Do you think it's a good time to buy multifamily properties? I just read a book that you guys might like called uh, Mastering the Market Cycle by Howard Marks. And he would say that based on everything, uh, based on everything he's saying, it's probably not the best time to buy multifamily right now. If you have multifamily and you've got it rented out, it's probably a better time to sell. I know I wrote a book on multifamily called The Perfect Investment, but I'm not buying multifamily at the moment. Um, someone says, can you leverage your portion of a syndication to do other deals? Kyle, that's a great question. Um, I don't think so. That's interesting. You may be able to borrow like from a private lender uh, from your uh, and put that up as collateral. I don't know. Thoughts about the real estate market in New Jersey, Camacho. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that horribly, Camacho. Um, I don't know. If anybody else on here would like to talk about the New Jersey real estate market, that's fine. I do know New Jersey, New York, Chicago, excuse me, Illinois and California have had a lot of trouble because of some government policies and high taxes. So I would not be <clears throat> real excited about investing in New Jersey, but that's just me. Uh, JK, the sentiment, hi JK, the sentiment is that we are at the peak or close of the peak of the cycle. Use extreme caution investing in a syndication. I totally agree. JK, I invest in syndications for a living and I completely agree that we need to use extreme caution and that's what we do. I made 13, my partner and I made 13 due diligence trips this year. That's extreme caution. I completely agree. Curtis says, I was born in Columbus, have family there, would love to chat with you about that. We have a podcast. It's for families on the road to financial independence. Hey Curtis, I've been on 95 podcasts 
I'd love to be on yours if you'd like to have me. And I used to live in Columbus myself when I went to Ohio State. Uh, Iron Glitch, any advice on a person looking to invest in a fourplex in Southern California? Uh, they're so expensive right now. Unless you've got a screaming good deal, and unless you're avoiding an area where there's rent control, I, I just... I wouldn't do it. And I've got friends in Southern California who are not doing it. And so I don't want to discourage you. I just don't think it's necessarily the best place to invest. Someone asked me where and what is the Southern Smile. Um, you might be able to Google that, but it's a lot of cities in the Sun Belt. So it would be like through like Phoenix, Scottsdale, uh, Albuquerque, Dallas, Houston, Austin, uh, around to Greenville, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Richmond, Virginia. It's just kind of a big southern like arc uh, that looks like a smiley face like this. So, uh, Agaz says, anyone experienced in willing to in JV with me so I can learn? Hey, if anybody has wants to JV with Agaz, there's your opportunity. Uh, Josh says, where and what? Okay, got it. Cash says, are duplexes in Washington overpriced? I don't know. Um, I have heard that they are. I've heard that almost everything is uh, overpriced in Washington and Oregon, California. But, you know, let's be honest. It's overpriced everywhere. I'm in Lynchburg, Virginia, and things are overpriced here. Right, Gabe? So, um, anyway. Um, Okay, where can I get population migration information? Hi, I Darius Osborne. Um, there's all kinds of information out there. You can just Google net population migration. Uh, there are a lot of stuff you can get from the Texas A&M Real Estate Education website. Texas A&M Real Estate Education. Uh, you can Google that. They've got a really good site. Uh, there's also stuff from the U.S. Census Bureau from the uh, US jobs. I can't remember the website, but there are a lot of stuff. Thanks, JK. Uh, Azuri says, do you think read space will continue to be solid? Now that we're not going to be going through real estate hikes in the near to medium term. I do agree with that. Um, yeah, I think the read space should continue to be do well. Um, I don't know that much about REITs, so um, I would say that it's not, you know, something I know a whole lot about. Big Brother in Life says, what are the best secondary and tertiary markets? There are so many. The problem is, just like the stock market, you know, like everybody already knows what a stock price should be, so you can't say Coca-Cola is underpriced. I mean, you can say that, but everybody, millions and millions of people have access to the same data that you do. and Therefore, Coca-Cola is exactly, the efficient market hypothesis says that it's exactly where it should be priced. Now, Warren Buffett disagrees with that. He finds anomalies, but they're few and far between, and it's hard to find anomalies. And it's the same thing here. All the best tertiary and secondary markets, they're already well known. And so if I told you Austin, Texas, uh, Greenville, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. These are all secondary and tertiary markets. Um, it's widely known that they are, that they're great, and they're already uh, getting overpriced. That's the problem with real estate. That's why it's really important to invest with great operators who have a team of people who are looking for anomalies. You need, I, I, like I said, I, I talked earlier on the show about finding anomalies, finding operators who know how to find those deals. Someone said, what would you do with $10,000? You're 21. Brian, something I haven't talked about on this uh, show so far is crowdfunding. You might be able to find a crowdfunding opportunity with um, somebody who's willing to work with non-accredited investors. And if you're an accredited investor, um, there's all kinds of opportunities for you to invest in syndications. Uh, Agaz says, anyone experienced in South Florida willing to JV from? Okay. Um, so um, I highly recommend that somebody reach out to Agaz here in Southern Florida. Uh, Muhammad says, which is the highest rental income property to buy? 
Muhammad, it's not necessarily that it's the highest income property. I mean, multifamily, self-storage, mobile home parks, they're, they're all return a nice return. The question is not whether you've got the highest returning property, it's whether you can buy right. It's whether you can find a crack. Like, you know, if everything, if let's say that there's a rising tide that floated all boats higher, okay? And that's where everything is. But if you can find something that's still down here, whoops, lower, then, you know, if you can find a deal that's below, that has latent potential, or is basically an anomaly, that's where you're gonna find your opportunity. Do you know there's 53,000 self-storage facilities in the US? 53,000. That's the same as all Starbucks, McDonald's, and uh, Subways combined. Now, 40,000 or so are owned by independent operators and about 35,000 of those are probably owned by mom and pop operators. Now, Muhammad, if you can find one of those that's got latent potential, it's basically got potential to expand the income or even turn it into a first class facility that might be acquired by a REIT later, that's the way to get outsized returns. And I'm investing with a company right now. My company, Wellings Capital, is investing with a company. We are throwing that open to our investors who has done that 21 times in a row. They just use the formula I just said. They buy from a mom and pop. They upgrade it. They increase income. They find a REIT to buy it, and they sell for a compressed or lower cap rate. That formula, 21 times, and they've been producing 71.1% annual income, uh, excuse me, annual total return at the asset level, their investors have been getting about a 42 to 44% IRR, internal rate of return annually. Pretty powerful. Hey, Phil, good morning. Andrew, what would be a good amount to save for a down payment on a fourplex with FHA? Can anyone else answer that? I'd love for you guys to uh, be able to answer each other, and I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I would assume 5% or 10% would be my guess. Chimamu says, how about multifamily in Chicago? It's pretty tough. And a lot of people are moving out of the Chicago area. Um, so I'm not sure it's the best place to invest. Video grab bag says, hey, what are some ways to compete with other investors who have staff who call and send letters to find multifamily mobile home parks and self storage deals? I'm in the Northwest. So glad you asked, yes. Um, I know a couple companies who send hundreds or thousands of letters and make thousands and thousands of phone calls. How do you compete with them? You drive for dollars. You drive around, you walk into these sites, you meet the owner, you meet the manager, you develop a relationship, you keep returning consistently. By the way, if you're going to write letters, do what my son does. He's a real estate investor. You write handwritten letters. Yes, it's a pain. Yes, it's time consuming handwritten letters. That's the way to go. But walking in and meeting them in person is a powerful uh, advantage that very few people have. And you should consider starting to do that. Um, someone says Georgia is a good place to start investing. Okay, T-Mac, thank you. Curtis Mays, go Bucks. Yes, absolutely. Um, Cash Pirat says, follow up on your answer. If I sell now, I'll have $100,000 profit. What should I use the money to make, I make to get back in some type of real estate investment? Uh, Cash, I don't know. It depends. Do you want to stay really active? I mean, do you want to stay super active in the deals yourself? Or do you want to, are you willing to uh, outsource it and invest passively? Uh, Try to answer that and we'll I'll try to answer I'll try to get back with you on that. Patrick says, what do you think of auctions? I don't know much about them. We do a lot of courthouse step auctions over the years. And uh, we used to buy a lot of houses on the courthouse steps uh, when we were flipping houses. Uh, as far as other auctions, yeah, you know, I would rather try to find other ways to find these deals off market. Sam says New Jersey taxes are two and a half percent of value, which hurts cash flows. And um, taxes in Philly are about one to one and a quarter percent of value, meaning Philly is the tallest midget at the party. Okay, yeah, so Philly right across the river um, is probably a better place 
to invest than New Jersey is what I think you're saying, Sam, and that makes total sense to me. Angel, hey Angel, I'm in the LA area. How to start a syndication? What books or people do you recommend? Thanks for your wisdom and time. There's a book by Gene Trowbridge, okay? T R O W B R I D G E. And I think it's called It's a Whole New Game. It's a Whole New Ball Game, something like that. I've got it over there on my bookshelf, but I can't see it right now. Uh, Gene Trowbridge. He wrote a book on syndication. It's not like a super high like marketing book. It doesn't teach you all the how-tos on marketing, but it will teach you the technical details about syndication. So hopefully that helps. Um, okay, Sandra Census. Yes, U.S. Census Bureau. Census Bureau, census.gov or something, or census something. They have a lot of good information, and I meant to mention that earlier. Thank you, Sandra. Um, somebody asked earlier about how to get uh, information on net population migration. That's right. Shimamu says, the real estate market appears to be overpriced. Yeah. Curious on your take, should I hold on to cash? Yeah, but I've been saying that for years. And, um, you know, if I would have invested in 2014 when I thought it was overpriced then, I would have made a killing in the last five years. And I honestly can serve cash and I had friends who made millions since then when I was sitting on the sidelines. So I don't know. I don't know how long to sit on the sidelines. Howard Marks, Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger says they can't predict when the cycle's going to turn. I know that I can't and I don't think any of us really can. The problem is it's based on human emotions. Will Higgs says, should we continue to own a property that taxes keep rising? Yeah, taxes are rising everywhere, but if it's disproportionately high, like California or Illinois, I don't know. I'd think twice about it. Lawrence says, what are you investing in? Yes, yeah, so I wrote a book on multifamily, and I promised I would never invite, invest in every, anything else. But I uh, ended up, my company, Wellings Capital, is investing in self-storage and mobile home parks. We're investing with companies who are finding these anomalies, these deals that fell through the cracks, these off-market deals. And um, one of the investments we just put, we just invested in in November, um, it was $4.3 million. It was a mom and pop seller. Uh, the operator that we invested through seven months ago went in and put U-Haul in, added $3,900 a month to the income right away. They had 80% delinquency. 80% of the people were not paying or paying late, and they had 80% occupancy. Now they have 90% or 95% occupancy and uh, a 5% delinquency. This is in Grand Junction, Colorado, and uh, the uh, income has gone up from 295,000 a year to 450 a year, I think. And that rise in income using our value formula, remember value is net operating income divided by cap rate. Assuming the cap rate didn't change, assuming it's constant at 7%, uh, the value of the property um, has just gone up in theory on paper from 4.3 million to 6.6 million, uh, 6.5 million, excuse me. And so that's a two point, no, it's 6.6, $2.3 million increase in value. There's only 2.15 million in equity in this property because it was a 50-50 loan. I know I'm throwing a ton of numbers at you. But basically the equity has doubled in seven months. This is the power of finding fragmented investments. And this is the stuff that my company is investing in. Amir Mustafa, you said I skipped your question at 131. I am so sorry. I don't have a timer on here. I don't think I can find it. Can you please copy and paste it back in? Okay, we're in the lightning round. The lightning round. I just made that up. Anyway, we're in the last 10 minutes of our show. And so I'm going to be rapid firing through. And if anybody else wants to reach out to me, you can join me on Wednesday at noon. For a limited number of people, I do another call like this. And um, you can also reach out to me at Bigger Pockets. Would you do me a favor and give us a smile, a thumbs up, a like, a share? Uh, we, that would really be great. Bigger Pockets would really appreciate it, and so would I. So I'm going to do a lightning round now. Adam, how do you look for markets that haven't gotten too much notice but have great potential? Um, that's the question of the year. I don't really know, and I should, but I don't. 
Um, if you, I, I, I do have a friend who claims he knows how to do that. <clears throat> he finds, he studies the news really carefully and he looks for areas that are growing where a lot of corporations are coming in. He found a little pocket in Phoenix or Scottsdale. He said that nobody seems to have noticed that has like 10,000 new jobs coming to and he's gonna be quietly trying to acquire land and build a multifamily there. But man, how do you do that systematically? I don't know. Adam, okay, thank you, Adam. Khalil, what do you feel about the Baltimore market? I've heard mixed reviews, I'm not sure. What do you think about coin laundromats, Lawrence? I don't know. If somebody else does, you, they can answer, I'm so sorry. Khalil, let me know. Agaz, Will Higgs. Trang Lee says, where can I learn how to upgrade efficiently self-storage? Okay, Scott Myers, that's M-Y-E-R-S, has a self-storage academy. He is he does these seminars for, I think it's 1,000 or 2,000 for a two or three day seminar. Um, highly recommend that you go to Scott Myers. You can check it out. You can Google self-storage academy. I can't remember the website. Patrick says, don't syndicates and REITs earn the same return? Uh, sometimes REITs don't have the tax efficiency. You don't get the losses passed through on your taxes because you get a 1099. Somebody can refute me on that, but that's my understanding. Um, so the, the net return through a syndication can often be higher. Uh, what about buying tax liens? Kyle says, yeah, uh, but they're not tax efficient like buying real estate. Um, good morning to you from LA. Hey, Fatima. Cash Pure, I'm a contractor by trade. I would like to manage the property myself. Okay. Will Higgs, Agaz, okay. It's a whole new business. That's what Azuri says it's called. Thank you. That's Gene Trowbridge book. It's a whole new business. And he's got like a third edition now. So check out the third edition. It includes crowdfunding in there. It's a blue book. A friend says, I will be moving to Connecticut soon. Is it investor friendly? I don't know. I'm sorry. I would kind of assume not so much. But uh, I shouldn't assume. That's wrong. Sergio says, on the topic of staff, um, okay, I'm not sure how to answer that. Vernon says, just starting out, live in flip or buy and hold. I would try to live in and do a house hack if you can. Um, Ty says, how, those are incredible numbers. How often do you see deals where you're able to increase net operating income and possibly compress the cap rate? Ty, great question. Um, they're few and far between, but we're investing with three companies who do this as a living. That's all they do. So Ty, so yeah, basically we do see them quite often, uh, but like on a national scale, they're hard to find. Kyle says, will your company accept non-accredited investors? Our two Wellings funds do not accept non-accredited investors, I'm sorry to say, but I do know of two other investment opportunities. You can reach out to me. Um, Edgar, what about tax liens? Um, yeah, again, I think tax liens and deeds are good ways to go. They're just not, I just don't think you'll be able to save huge on taxes. Um, Sandra says, I know a fantastic opportunity, but I don't have the money. Can we talk privately? Yeah, please reach out to me. That would be great. And please jump on my call Wednesday at noon. If we don't get a chance to connect before that, uh, you can reach out to me privately. King Jean says, my realtor found me a great deal on owner occupied, owner occupancy only condo. Oh, I get it. Association rejected based on felony, con felony conviction. How far back can they legally go? King Gene, I, man, I would, I don't know how far back they can legally go, but I would say look somewhere else. That's not normal. I wouldn't think that's normal at all. And I'm sorry that really happened to you. Uh, everybody has a chance, should have a chance for a new start, and I hope you can get one too. Uh, Fatima says, where's the best place to make money in real estate? Buy and hold versus flip. I think both. I would try to do some of both. Flip some to make some money. Uh, I know a company that flips one and then buys and holds two. Then they flip one, then they buy and hold two. And so, uh, you know, you can make enough money from a flip to put a down payment on a buy and hold or two, and that's what they're doing. Lawrence says, if you invest 500,000 down into an investment, like a shopping center or hotel. What do you think is a good ROI on your down payment besides the loan? Well, I would think a good cash on cash return would be seven or 8%. And then a good total annual return would be 12 to 15%. 
um, buyer Wellings incomes fund, income funds are looking for deals like that or better. Uh, is wholesaling the best way to get into real estate? Hi, NVST Zess. Um, it's a great way to get into real estate, and I think driving for dollars is the best way to get under the radar and beat out some of these companies uh, who are spending tens of thousands a month to mail postcards and letters. If you can drive around, you might be able to find deals that nobody else can find. Digital, uh, by the way, it's very, very time intensive. Fatima says, what is company name? Uh, if you mean my company, it's Wellings Capital, W-E-L-L-I-N-G-S-C-A-P-I-T-A-L, wellingscapital.com. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Sandra says, thanks so much. We'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, Sandra, if you want to talk privately again, you might, uh, again, just reach out to me on my private message, uh, individual message. So um, you can, e you, the best way to reach me is through my Bigger Pockets channel. So again, it's Paul Moore. I'm with Wellings Capital. I have a Bigger Pockets uh, membership, and so you can reach out to me there. And would love to chat with any of you either on Wednesday when we can talk more. Uh, actually, I can hear your voice and you can answer me, ask me questions. Um, and uh, we can try to do that. Uh, someone says, how will wholesalers be affected by a recession? I don't think they will be that much. Um, I think wholesale works in, I think wholesaling could actually work better during a recession because there'll be a lot less competition for deals and people will be more ready to sell. Do you do private money lending? I don't do private money lending, Adam, but I, I know of opportunities if you have private money to the, where you could put the money to work. NBC uh, says, what books are the best to read about building wealth through real estate and protecting it? Um, I like this book called The Perfect Investment. <laughs> but also there's another book called by Steve Burgess, B-E-R-G-E-S. Uh, Steve Burgess, How to Buy and Sell Apartments. It's not exactly that, but it's something like that. And then a lot of books on Bigger Pockets. Brandon Turner has some amazing books. I highly, highly recommend Brandon Turner's books on real estate and other books on Bigger Pockets. And I didn't just say that, they are awesome. Um, video grab bag, what are your plans for additional money you will be making? Um, I think you're going to have to ask that again, and we're, we got one minute left, so if you can ask again, I'll try to answer it. Wednesday, what time are you on the air? I'm doing a noon private call with a handful of people uh, at noon on Wednesday, and you're going to have to reach out to me individually. We only have a few slots for that because we don't want too many people talking over each other. Um, I don't think I answered the question about books very well. Check out Think and Grow Rich. Um, everybody should read, in, in, no matter what you're doing. You know, everybody makes their money ultimately from sales of some kind. Whatever you're doing, you should certainly check out the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And another book you should check out is from Oren Claff. And this is my closing thought today. It's called Pitch Anything. Oren, O-R... Now am I getting it right? O-R-E-N, Claff, K-L-A-F-F. Uh, check it out. It's called Pitch Anything, and it will change your life. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up, folks. It's 2 o'clock Eastern. It's been great being with you. Sorry about the, the awkward beginning today. Uh, I had a hard time getting started, but shout out to Gabe. Thank you, Gabe, for helping me get started. Gabe from Lynchburg, my favorite banker at BB&T and Forrest. Gabe, you deserve a raise. I hope you get one. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and we will talk next time here at the Bigger Pockets live stream if they don't fire me. Have a great Saturday and we will talk soon. Goodbye.